together for Ed Kwan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here in this room tonight because of what happened in 1894. In 1894, a man by the name David Frederick Wingfield Vernon was born. Later, he was known as Di Vernon, the man who fooled Houdini, and even later, the professor. Hi, my name is Ed Kwan. I am 21 years old. I come from Seoul, South Korea. And I'm here for the first time at the Magic Castle. Thank you. So I'm here to bewitch and bewilder you. Are we ready? Yes, yes. we are. What is your name? Therese. Therese, it's a pleasure to meet you, Therese. Pleasure. What is your name? Jamie. Jamie, it's a pleasure to meet you, Jamie. And ladies, please relax because we have a room full of new friends who want you to have a great time. I guarantee it. Am I right? Yes. 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 Okay. Excellent. You see, the Professor Di Vernon believed that simple effects are often the, the strongest, the most elegant, and the most beautiful to behold. So allow me to begin with something quite simple. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be yeah. just fine. <laughs> uh, feel this coin. Make sure it's exactly what it seems to be. An old Walking Liberty half dollar from the 1940s. It's not a chocolate coin or anything, right? Okay. Excellent. Now, there are three golden rules in magic. Number one, never let the audience know what will take place. That kills the element of surprise. The coins will travel from one hand to the other. <laughs> now, the second rule is, do not repeat the same trick twice to the same audience. I'll do this four times. <laughs> and lastly, but most importantly, never, ever, ever, in any circumstances, reveal how a trick is accomplished. <laughs> Are you watching closely? How many coins do you see? Four. Excellent. Watch. Because the closer you look, the less you see. The less you see, the better for me. No strings or anything. The second coin will travel just like the first one, okay? Now you won't really see it, but if you listen, you'll hear it. Listen. The birds of a feather flock together. The next one I'll do it wide in the open. Watch. At my fingertips. One coin will travel from this hand to this hand, okay? From this hand to this hand. <laughs> please, call me Ed. Uh, may I see your hand, please? That is one, two, three, and four coins. How many coins do you have? Four. And how many do I have? None. None. Yes? None. Uh, would you mind uh, closing your hand tight? I'll take just one. That leaves you with three, yes? Okay, hold it still, just like that. Right here. Watch. This coin will join the other three in a magical way. Like a ghost through an ancient castle. <laughs> Let go of the coins. <laughs> oh, four. I think we're warmed up. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> 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 Professor Di Vernon studied uh, many classical performers, namely the 19th century Viennese magician, Johann Nepomuk Hofsenser. I just like saying that there. <laughs> <laughs> Johann Nepomuk Hofsenser. <laughs> Hofsenser believed that playing cards are like the poetry of conjuring. Allow me to demonstrate. Uh, Jamie, do you play cards at all? Um, sometimes. Sometimes? What do you play? Go fish. <laughs> okay, um, blackjack. Blackjack? Well, that's good enough for me. Uh, in fact, could you give the cards a cut? You've done this before. Yes. <laughs> You've done it quite eloquently. Excellent. And I do not want to disturb the integrity of your cut, so I'm going to leave it like that for the time being. Now, this is what I call a target practice. If you were an archer, you'd set up a target on a tree, Shoot an arrow and try to hit the bullseye, right? Yeah. Now, for obvious reasons, we can't quite do that in this room. <laughs> that is why we have the perfectly safe, friendly deck of playing cards right over here. Jamie, could you just push out the card that you cut to? Yeah, just push it out. Just and, one? Yeah, just one. And put, uh, and, and put your hand on top. 
and guard it with your life. Oh, okay. Don't let anyone hinder with that card, because I don't want you to think that I'm cheating. Okay. Sir, I don't cheat. <laughs> Much. <laughs> now first, I have to pick up an impression, because whatever card this is, there should still be three other cards in this deck that match that card's value. Yes? Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Jamie, you are an interesting woman. You can tell my husband that. Well, whatever <laughs> makes you happy. <laughs> I feel a strong connection with this card. Can you see it well? Huh? What card is this, Jamie? Is it, um, Jack? Yes, Jack, Jack of Hearts. Okay. Of course, I could announce it myself, <laughs> but I know that none of you believe a single word that's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. It must be my tie. <laughs> I think the second jack, the jack of clubs, should be right over here. The tension mounts. The plot thickens. What could possibly happen next? I'm glad you asked. The next and final jack would be the jack of diamonds, which I believe is exactly 27 cards down. Sometimes I miss. Not tonight. Oh, oh wow. Uh, Jamie, please prove to everyone that I was indeed correct. Show everyone the Jack of Spades. That should be the Jack of Spades. Show them. Yeah. The Jack of Spades. Uh, <laughs> no! Oh, liar! <laughs> no! <laughs> Jamie, Jamie. I'm afraid you chose the wrong card. They told me to cut it. But it's okay. Allow me to rectify this situation. All I do is... Snap my fingers and watch. Like the mirage that shimmers in the desert's dust. Oh my god. Isn't that beautiful? Awesome. Uh, I, I do it for myself all the time. <laughs> Uh, and uh, would you help me out with the next one? Yeah. I'm not going to look. I'm going to turn my back around. Please take one card, and when you're happy with the card, place it on the table, okay? Okay. <laughs> doesn't matter which one it doesn't is. doesn't matter which card. Okay. Are you happy with the card? Yes. Okay, leave the table here. Well, and don't, at... don't show it to anyone until I look, uh, I look, look back. Should I look? Be patient, ma'am. <laughs> just, just <laughs> I'm going to turn my back around. Now it is safe. Because I don't want you to think that I'm peeking, you know? Okay. Are you happy with the card? Yes. Excellent. Bet. I'm going to leave the card in the deck. Okay. And Jamie, just push the card in flush when I count a three. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever makes you happy. Okay. Square the card all the way? Oh. Yes. Jamie, is that fair? Yes. Now, if it was any fairer than that, you'd be cheating me. Yeah, right. <laughs> You see, no, it's okay. I everyone makes an honest mistake. In fact, I make one all the time. Uh, my last show, a, gentleman's, a gentleman was seated right here, and uh, he did not make an honest mistake. He had a mal intention. Oh. How do I put it lightly? He was less than sober. <laughs> <laughs> very talkative, very disruptive. He wanted to examine everything. He wanted to examine me. <laughs> and he said, kid, if you're that good, why don't you let me shuffle those cards? And being a polite soul, I couldn't refuse. I said, okay, the show must go on. Make it quick. And I handed him the deck and turned around briefly to take a sip out of uh, the glass of water, which was uh, right over here. And he meticulously turned half the cards face up, let the other half face down. And you know what's coming. He shuffled those two packets together making a huge mess out of the cards. Some cards, made, some cards facing up and some cards facing down. Topsy-turvy throughout, almost like 52 pickup. Of course, I could see all of this because I could see it through the reflection of my glass. Oh. <laughs> I pretended I didn't notice. So I turned <laughs> back around and said, Sir, would you be impressed if I can find your card? He sneered. He crossed his arms. He leaned back and said, you know, son, I'll be very impressed if you can find my card because I just shuffled those cards face up and face down. 
And I looked, and indeed, the cars were mixed face up and face down. Some cars were facing up, some cars were back to back, face to face. I said, that's not a problem, sir. <laughs> Watch. All I do is cast my shadow, and something unbelievable will happen. Watch close. What the eyes see, the heart must believe. No way. No way. You'll never do it again. <laughs> no, but the gentleman laughed out loud. He was so satisfied. He had a great time. And that's all that matters. <laughs> Jamie, we only have one rule in this room. Have fun and be happy. I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm very happy. Are we all having fun? Yes. yes. I must be doing something, right? Yes, you are. Excellent. Uh, does anyone have? Uh, does anyone play cards in this room? Come on, I know you're here. The longer you wait, the bigger the shame will be. <laughs> Any card players in the room? Yeah. Yes. She just called you out. Uh, uh, what do you play, sir? Poker. Poker. What kind of poker? Texas Hold'em. Do you play uh, any of the traditional poker, like the five card draw or seven card stud, any of those? But you're familiar with the poker in, in general. Excellent. Uh, you see, if you were in the military, you'd be reading Sun Tzu's The Art of War. If you're into the politics, you'd be reading Machiavelli's The Prince or The Art of the Deal. It depends. <laughs> if you were into biology, you'd be reading Charles Darwin's The Origin of Species. But what do you read if you are a card man? Well, sir, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Expert at the Card Table, written by a mysterious author, S.W. Ernest, in 1902. <coughs> and although the real identity of the author still remains obscure, the book is considered to be the classic treatise, the Bible, if you would, of card manipulation. Di Vernon, the magician we're talking about right now, discovered this book when he was eight years old. And by the time he was 13, he had memorized the entire content. He enjoys sitting at the bar outside and quiz his students. How many one-handed moves are in Erdnays? Or at which point does Erdnays talk about overcoming the friction with the nail? He enjoyed torturing his students like that. <laughs> See all those intimate secrets? No, no, you can't look that close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, we happen to stop right here. Uh, would you please read that out so everyone can hear it? Stock shuffle. Stock shuffle. And we all know what a stock shuffle is. No? Really. Allow me to rephrase that for you. Stacking the deck. Ah. Ah. But has anyone actually seen someone stack a deck before? Does anyone know how one can stack a deck of cards? Well, it's your lucky night, folks, because I shall endeavor to illustrate how a gambler might cheat you at your own home with your own cards, at your own game, and beat you with the stock shuffle. Of course, in an actual game, no sane gambler would produce such a conspicuous hand such as the four flamboyant aces. But it's, it's a demonstration, so I think uh, I have the artistic liberty to do that. <coughs> you know, four aces is a lot of aces to control. I think tonight I'll go with just three. The knight is young. Who cares about the last one anyway? Okay. Uh, assuming we have, what's a good number? Five. Five number of players. Because the odd number of players is always more difficult than the even number of players because you can't divide it by two, right? The formula goes, the number of play. in fact, uh, the formula is very simple, but I only say it once, so please pay attention. The formula goes, the number of players times two plus one, number of players minus one, number of players and one to compensate for the, for the minus one from earlier, and uh, players, number of players again. Got it. You got it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll go again. Number of players. That would be 5 times 2. That would be 10. 10 plus 1 would be 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Simple. Number of players minus 1. That would be 5 minus 1. That would be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Number of players. That would be 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes? And uh, 1 to compensate for the minus 1 from earlier, obviously. Number of players again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then my secret ally seated to my right gives the cards a dead cut from the center. It has to be from the center? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Now you see, I just gave the deck a series of shuffles. But during these shuffles, I was not primarily concerned with really mixing the cards. I was primarily concerned with repositioning those three aces so that when I deal, I get the aces. And I think any card player in the room will agree that three aces is indeed a powerful 
poker hand. Whoa. But just for you, sir, I found the last one. <laughs> uh, you know, just out of curiosity, let's, let's see how the, how the other players did here. Well, a pair of eights, nothing spectacular there. We have <coughs> nothing over here. A pair of nines and a pair of fours. You see, there's no point in stacking the aces for yourself if there's no competition. You don't play the cards, you play the man. So how do you convince the other players to bet heavily so that when you win, you end up with a large sum of money in the pot? Well, Jamie, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, you have to first give the other players a good hand. Not good enough to beat yours, but convincing enough that they'll bet heavily. And of course, that requires me to memorize the order of the entire deck. Naturally, it is a time-consuming process, uh, but we do have 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, does anyone have a watch with yes. a second hand? Yes. Yes. Just say go and start timing me, okay? <laughs> no, just let me know. Go. Uh, <laughs> go. Yeah. Done. How long did that take? Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Last night I could do it in one and a half seconds. <laughs> I must be getting old. <laughs> See, now that I memorized the cards, I give the cards a few stacking shuffles and stacking cuts, and we're set to go. You do realize, though, with the time to do this, I could have become a doctor. <laughs> but you do what you love, you follow your passion. Excellent. Let's assume that this is an actual game of five card draw and we shall proceed as such. If I control the cards correctly, and I usually do, the player seated to my left, in fact you ma'am, you should have an almost flush in hearts. Almost a heart flush except for one card. I thought I was joking. <laughs> now the next player, sir, you are somebody that I would call a safety raiser. Because it is always safe to raise on two pairs. In fact, I gave you a pair of queens and a pair of tens. I hope that suits your interest. <laughs> and sir, you look like a lot of you look like someone with a lot of money in your wallet. <laughs> so I didn't take any chances. I gave you all four deuces. And Jamie, I'll be honest with you, I ran out of time, there was a little confusion, and I could only afford to track down two sixes. But please don't take it personally. <laughs> now, for the, for the honest dealer, you okay? <laughs> well, we'll see how it turns out. Um, what would you do here to make a heart flush? I would discard this one? that four, right? And hope the next one is a heart, yes? <laughs> yeah. Indeed it is. Oh. I know you're staying in this game. <laughs> Sir, what did you do? You have two pairs. Uh, two pairs. And uh, someone said full house, right? To make, that, to make a full house, we need either a 10 or a queen. Which one do you like better? I'll take the queen. As you wish. <laughs> <laughs> and sir, what do you want to do here? I hold. You hold, perfect. And uh, Jamie, you know, uh, let me help you with that. I think I think we I think we could maybe go for two pairs, because sure. we have a pair of sixes. Maybe if we have another pair, another pair yeah. it's it's not too bad of a hand. It's how you play it, you know. Two pairs, and this proves to us that sometimes it is far better to be lucky than skilled. Oh. <laughs> That's a very good hand. Of course I'm going to give you a good hand. <laughs> we can split the profit 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> and I shall discard one card and draw one. Ah, the Ace of Spades. You see, Jamie, if you accidentally drew one more card, you would have had this Ace. Uh -huh. Four Aces, which is one of the strongest hands in poker. But no, no, no. You left me with the Ace of Spades. But not only the Ace. <laughs> the Ten, the Jack, the Queen, the King. The <laughs> royal flush in spades. Wow. I do realize the odds of getting that hand is lower than winning a lottery. <laughs> okay. 
That's, that's why you don't play cards with strangers. <laughs> um, should we do one more? Yes. yes. Yeah. Sure. sure, okay. I usually don't do this, but um, you are my last audience of the week. So before I conclude, please give the two beautiful ladies a big round of applause. They do wonderful. So here we go, the final piece. Ma'am, could you help me out with this one? Sure. I'm going to start shuffling the cards in this fashion, and whenever you feel like to say the word stop, and don't feel pressured to stop anywhere. Okay, stop. Here? So soon. <laughs> <laughs> the five or the eight? I'm sorry? The five or the eight? Eight. The eight. There we go. And since we're talking about Di Vernon, uh, let's use his favorite card, the ace of clubs. Jamie, would you mind taking out the ace of clubs? <laughs> You're doing great, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, turn the card face down and insert it wherever you want. Okay. Okay. And ma'am, should we use the card directly above or directly below that card? Um, gosh. Below. Below? Okay, the two of diamonds. Now watch closely. Because the moment this card touches the back of that card, this card will change. It'll transform before your very eyes. Watch closely. You'll see the moment. Did you see the card change? Not yet. No, no, not the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And if I take the rest of these cards, drop these in and give them a little shake and a snap, all the cards will turn red. Oh all the cards. All, of course, except for one card. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ed Kwan, and welcome oh. to the Magic Castle. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Where are you going? We're not in a rush.